gilt on the gingerbread, the icing on the cake. It's monuments and mirror glass, the city's on the make. The devil takes the hindmost, and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. Love. You could call it ambition, but someone must be greed. Don't want you for a friend if you're a friend in need. I'm gonna tell the truth if you swallow a lie. I want the icing on the cake. Love. It's killed us. Stone dead. Don't exaggerate, Magda. Who's exaggerating? It's so thin it looks like the Anorexia Gazette. And as for content... Well, if my spring bride's piece didn't want to make you throw up, the rest of it would. What's got into Maxine? Serves her right. The signs were there, she took no notice. Now I'm left making excuses for the advertisers. My heart might bleed for you if you weren't the disloyal rat that walked out on us. But I was right, though, wasn't I? It's not always a question of right or wrong, Campbell. There's loyalty to be considered. I'm loyal to my pocket. This is going to cost us. Pardon Type this up for me, please. Well, I'm busy at the Just moment. Just do it. Good morning. Morning. My, we're looking very, uh, stylish today. Thank you. Some of us have to make an effort. If we want this magazine to survive, that is. Right. I'll pick you up later, then. Don't bother. I think I'll work right through. Caro, don't be like this. I want to talk to you. To me? What about Maxine? Wouldn't you much rather talk to her? Oh, please don't bring Maxine into this. This is to do with you and me. And the baby. Can't you get it into your thick head? There isn't any baby. There never will be any baby. There's nothing to talk about. Can I go now? Caro. You're building this wall round yourself. Round me. Now, if you don't want to talk to me, perhaps you could see someone. A psychiatrist. Oh, I see what you're getting at. What I need is a few pills to make me normal. That would just suit you, wouldn't it? Look, I didn't mean it like that. Go on, Brad, admit it. I don't behave right. I don't say the right things when you press the buttons. I don't even have babies right. In fact, I'm not really much use at all, am I? Caro, look, don't talk like this. This is you and me. Oh, yes, Mr. and Mrs. Perfect Couple. Well, we can stop living that lie. Caro. Let me go. Caro. Ah, there you are. The only reasonable woman I know, thank God you've arrived. Coffee. Mm. I tell you, I just don't understand women. I mean, I slog my guts out to find Gemma a place to live, and now she refuses even to speak to me. So I go around and try and patch things up with Jasmine, like you suggested. She takes one look at the box of chocolates that I bought her, and she kicks me out as well. I don't know. You all right? Yes. Just a bad morning. Don't you go letting me down. You're the only proof I've got that women can be sane, sensible people. That's quite a burden of responsibility. I don't think I'm up to it this morning. Can't be all that bad. Your horoscope says there's romance in the air for you today. Not much chance of that. Don't try and fight it, baby. It's bigger than both of us. There's certainly something out there much bigger than Brad and me. I tried to tell you, you're wasting your time. I don't want any arguments, Campbell. I just want to know how much this fiasco is going to cost us. Well, I can tell you right now. Plenty. I want to know who are the advertisers hardest hit and what it's going to take to get them back on side. Now, that is going to cost us. I'm going to have to spend to get them back. We'll see. Campbell, mm. you didn't stand by us the other night. If you ever do that again, you're dead. Do you understand? Dead in the magazine industry, that is. We're going to see Jasmine. Want to come? After all the trouble she's caused me. She can rot in hell for all I care. What about you? Are you coming? Oh, I've got lots to do. You're going to have to face her sometime, you know.
Honestly, those morons at the wholesalers wouldn't have a brain between the lot of them. Cara, what's the matter? <laughs> hey, hey, it'll be all right. I've been such a fool to think that I could take your mother's place. She's the one that belongs with Brad, not me. Don't worry about Maxine. I won't have to soon. Brad's going to go running back to her and then she'll have them all to herself. Don't talk that way. I'll tell you what. I'll shut off the courtyard, get her some lunch, and if you want to, you can tell me all about it. Only no more tears. Okay? <sighs> Good day, Bones. How are you going? Hi. Hello, Jasmine. Well, I must say, you're looking a lot better. Oh, Magda. <laughs> the last time I saw you, you were out like a light. Hello, Gemma. Hi. Welcome back to the land of the living. Well, I've appraised the board of the reasons for the stay bark. And needless to say, they're none too impressed, but I think we can ride out the worst of it. Good. We were stymied. Mm. We must make sure that Rex Thorne doesn't do that again. And we must start fighting back. <laughs> now may not be the time for heroics. Oh, nonsense, Reed. You know as well as I do that once this sort of thing starts happening, it keeps on happening. And before you know it, your history, unless you fight. What are you proposing? We put out the supplement with the next issue. You are joking. No. <laughs> Maxine, that supplement's already cost us a fortune. The board aren't going to pay out any more if they can avoid it. They'll have to. Otherwise, we'll lose half of our major advertisers. And if that happens... But how can you do it? Your fashion editor's still flat on her back. There's no one else available to do it. Leave the staff to me. Don't worry, darling. We're not going to go down without a fight. And then when the nurse found out, I worked for Gloss and brought me a copy of the latest issue. Don't worry about it. But I do. It was all my fault. No, it wasn't. Personally, I blame Bridget. Thanks. I'll deal to you back at the office. Which is where we should be heading. Honestly, don't worry about it. Just get well and come back. We can't have you lounging around enjoying yourself for too long. <laughs> Thanks. It's all right. See you, kid. See you. Bye-bye. Gemma? Yeah? Can I have a word? Sure. I'll catch you up. What is it? Well, I've, I've been thinking a lot about what happened with Alastair and Mark. Yeah. And I just wanted to apologize for taking Mark Jasmine, away from me. Jasmine, don't. You didn't take Mark away from me. Just like I didn't take Alistair away from you. He was using you, Jasmine. He called around, bought some flowers and chocolates. My, my, he does know all the cliches, doesn't he? <laughs> I told him to get out. Good on you. The last thing you need in your life right now is an Alistair Redfern sleezing around, believe me. I guess I'm learning these things. So am I. So am I. I'll see you back at the office, okay? Sorry. Mark. Hello, Gemma. Visiting Jasmine. Yeah. God, you're not her doctor, are you? No, I'm not. But I like to look in now and then. Quite ironic, isn't it? I suppose so. So, how have you been keeping? Fine. You look different. Changed. I have changed. In a lot of ways, I think you wouldn't understand. No, I wouldn't. Well, I'd better let you go then. Bye. Like ships that pass in the night. Isn't that what they say? Probably. I really don't care. No, you don't, do you?
You saw Gemma? Not really. It's a bit hard to recognize her these days. You know that she and Alistair have broken up. Really? So I guess that means that you two will be... I don't think I'm in Gemma's league anymore. I really feel for you, Mark. I'll get over it. Hope so. Nice people don't deserve to get hurt. So, how have you been today? I'm okay. And I think I'm going to get a lot better. <laughs> I really do. There you are, you see. With a bit of creative accounting, we can absorb the extra costs. Possibly. The board isn't going to be too happy, though. Oh, the day-to-day -day running is my job. Your job is to keep the board off my back. Yes, yes. But there's more going on upstairs than you're aware of. It may not be that easy. What? What's going on upstairs? Changes. Just changes. And I'm one of the things they want changed. Don't be so paranoid. Of course not. Then you'll support me. I'll do my best. Good. I'm sure you will. No, Maxine. I see. Once, yes, but now... We've confused our business and personal lives in the past, but that's all over. From now on, let's just keep it to business, eh? Absolutely. Excuse me. Oh, I didn't realize you two were so intimate. What's she doing here? Drinking? It's a free country. Yeah, well, uh, I'll catch you later. Sorry to break up your little tete-a-tete. -tete. Oh, and Campbell, I'm surprised. I always thought you were so straight. You've got a filthy mind. He's quite right. It's the part of you I find most attractive. What are you up to? Well, let's just say he's my dealer. Really? Drugs or information? Take your pick. Drink? Champagne. The lady has expensive taste. The lady also has an inquisitive mind. And before tonight is through, I aim to find out just exactly what makes Rex Thorne tick. This I shall look forward to. Are we expecting Caro home for dinner tonight? I think not. I see. Again. I said, not home for dinner again. Ugh. Hard day at the office. Peak of a day. The knives were out. Some of them from quite unexpected quarters. Draw blood? Through this thick old hide, darling. <laughs> you must be joking. Chelsea shouldn't be long. Oh, I'm not in too much of a hurry. Oh, of course. You've got Cara holding the fort for you, haven't you? Mm, just as well. Where would you be without her? Housewife, waitress, dab hand with a zabaglione. Eh? Where would we all be without her? I really don't know, Mother. Must be very hard for you to think of someone so young and beautiful as being your stepmother. I don't. How do you think of her then? As a friend? As the one woman around me I can trust, depend on? Thank you very much. <laughs> Still, it must be lovely for her to have you as a friend right now. I hope so. Hmm. She needs a friend. She's had a hard time with the miscarriage and everything. I shouldn't think your father's much good to her. And I'm sure you'll be very good at comforting Cara. Very good indeed. Mom. Oh, sorry, I forgot I was meant to work tonight. I got talking to Simon. Look, I won't be a minute. You know, it's very flattering for a woman to be comforted by a man. So seductive. Even a man who thinks that all women are alike. Oh, lay off, will you? Oh, it's all right, darling. I realize that your motives are entirely innocent. Just simple friendship and gratitude, nothing more. 
It's your father I worry about. With all this on his plate, old habits will be calling. Can a leopard ever really change its spots? What do you think? <laughs> Rex, you know, you really are a confusing sort of a bloke. One minute I'm sitting here enjoying myself, and the next I'm feeling guilty, as if I shouldn't be here. That maybe we should be hiding under the table at my place. Why not hide under this one? <laughs> better? <gasps> My, the stars do look lovely tonight. Oh, isn't that Venus over there? No, it's a piece of chewing gum. Maxine doesn't <laughs> own you, you know. Oh, God. That was so romantic. What do you do for an encore? <laughs> Go on, drink. I've got no idea where it's been. Well, calls herself a feminist and she won't even drink champagne out of a bloke's coochies. <laughs> I'll probably get athlete's foot in the mouth. <laughs> it's the most revolting thing I think I've ever seen. You really do have serious psychological problems, you know. Good. Come on. Your place or mine? No. To Al's diner. No. Oh, God. Can't we go somewhere else? Into the heart of Redfern country to boldly go where no lecture editor has gone before. We have to. Of course I want to shop my new feature writer. Rex. I am not your new feature writer. You will be if you know what's good for you. Come on. Rex! <laughs> Hi, Caro. Hello, Chelsea. Sorry we're late. Oh, that's all right. I haven't exactly been rushed off my feet. Feeling OK? Of course I am. Oh, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> Give us a bottle of Moat, will you, Chelsea, love? I feel like celebrating. I feel like celebrating the death of gloss. I think if you look closely, you'll find the corpse is still breathing. Not for long, kid, not for long. Oh, that man is a creep. I'd like to break this bottle over his head. You want me to deal with him? Mm, my pleasure. Alistair? Mm -hmm. Is there something going on between you and Cara? No. Why? It's just that you... Nothing. Six months, maybe less. I certainly couldn't give Gloss any longer than that. And I hope I get a front seat at the funeral. Your wine, sir? Thank heaven for that. I do hope you can't talk and drink at the same time. It's really quite nice having a red fern waiting on you. Perhaps you could offer your mother a job. She'll be needing one before too long. I'll tell her you suggested it. So how about it? Leave. Join Electra. I'll pay you anything you want. Money's no object. And besides that, there are the fringe benefits. How about it? We'd make a great team. I'll tell you something, Rex. I like you. I like you because you're good in bed. No other reason. As far as working for you goes, I know I whinge and moan about Gloss, but deep down, I really do enjoy it. And I do not want to work for you, OK? Sleep with? Yes. Work for? No. Got it? Don't do this, Magda. Don't use that old slag over me. Because if you do, you're going to regret it. Boy, you really know how to turn a quiet night out into an unforgettable role in the cesspit. Shut up and drink your wine. You're looking tired. I'm fine. I should go home. Thank you, Chelsea, but I'm quite fine. I was talking to Dad. Well, if there's anything I can do to help. Thank you, Chelsea, but uh, your father and I have got to sort this out ourselves. OK? No, Rex. I do not want to work for you. And if you carry on like this much longer, you can forget about sleeping with me as well. What is your problem? Problem? You're the one with the problem. I'm going to the top, Magda. 
And when I'm there and you're still scrabbling around in the dust at my feet, you realize that you had your chance. But you blew it, darling. You just blew it. Because I'm going to stomp on you. Just like I'm going to stomp on Maxine Redfern and that pathetic little magazine of hers. It's easy. You wouldn't believe how easy it is. Money can buy anything. It can get your grubby little comic killed like that. And it can easily kill the career of a cynical old hack who doesn't know a good thing when it slaps her in the face. I'm the future, Magda. Either get on my side or get out of the way. Oh dear, I do believe the future looks rather wet. Sayonara, Rex. Morning, Grandma. You're up bright and early. And why not? The morning's the best time of the day. Not that you'd notice, I shouldn't think. Depends on how bad the hangover is. I suppose it's you that's been keeping Caro out till all hours? No, it's Caro who's been keeping Caro out. You're here already. I'll just go and get my bag. How about facing up to a few facts, Grandma? Like the fact that it isn't necessarily my fault whenever there are family hassles. It's not my fault that Caro lost a baby. And it's not my fault that she and Brad aren't getting on too well. Oh, yes. Butter wouldn't melt in your mouth, would it? You are certainly Maxine's boy, all right. And we all know what happens when your mother touches anything. Off with Alistair. To the markets. You have for dinner? Maybe. Where's Olivia? Thought you two were settling in for a chat. Last seen heading for the hemlock patch. what you intend to do about Caroline. There's not a great deal I can do. But at least you could try and get her away from Alistair. That boy's no fit company for her. Do you think I haven't tried? Do you think I want her gallivanting around with Alistair, when at home we can't even string two words together without arguing? I think I'm enjoying this. It's just that she needs some sort of friend right now, and I know it isn't me. Oh, Bradley, what a fool you are sometimes. Can't you see where all this is likely to lead? Look, Mother. Don't start interfering in my marriage. It's something I've got to work out myself. Haven't we heard that before? It's true, isn't it? You're up to something. You have an overactive imagination. What on earth makes you think that? I saw you and Alastair plotting last night. Plotting? Goodness gracious, you make us sound like a couple of communists. We were merely discussing the old days when we were a family. You'd like to have your father back again, wouldn't you? Yeah, I guess so. Remember bedtimes. Remember you wouldn't go to sleep until he'd read you that book. What was it? Where the wild mm. things are. You were such a sweet little thing, weren't you? Ah, well. It's a bit late for that, isn't it? You had your chance. I wouldn't say that. Your father and I have a relationship. We always have had, and we always will. Yeah, well, Caro has a relationship with him, too, and I wouldn't want to see her get hurt. You don't need to worry about Caro, darling. She's quite capable of looking after herself. Is she? Yes. She's a nurse, remember? They're all so practical. Allow me. Where are we going to put them all? Well, we'll find somewhere. Hello. What's this?
To a wonderful person and a wonderful partner, love, Alastair. Really, Alistair, this is too much. You've already spent a fortune on flowers at the markets, and now this. You're far too extravagant, you know that. Maxine. What? Nothing. You called? Did you know there was a board meeting today? No. Reed's secretary has just said he's in a board meeting. The next board meeting isn't until next week. I don't like it. It need not be about us. Oh, after the most disastrous issue we've ever put out. Of course it's about us. Come in. Hello. Julian, find out what you can, will you, Bridget? How are you, Maxine? I loved the magazine. I thought my article read really well, didn't yes, you? Yes, Julian, it's fine. Now, I want you to do me a little favor. For you, Maxine, anything. It's Jasmine. You know she collapsed. Mm-hmm. Well, I want you to make her better. What, you mean analysis? Yes. Heaven knows she's probably neurotic beyond redemption, but oh, someone with your healing touch could do wonders for the girl. Yeah, I'll give it my best shot. Good. And perhaps you and I could discuss some possible relaxation techniques over dinner tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, Julian. I've got other plans tonight. Another time? Sorry. Oh, it's all right. Mr. King's just leaving. Oh, Julian. Jasmine's therapy. It is on the house, isn't it? Ah, just the person I want to drown. That's a very negative thought, Magda. Well, thanks to you, Maxine wants an article on Auckland in analysis. And I've just been interviewing some of the biggest dingbats this side of California, commonly known as your professional colleagues. Careful. You might just need one of these dingbats one day. I doubt it. But I tell you someone who does. Rex Thorne. Heaven knows there's enough sludge in his psyche to keep the lot of you going forever. I know I've never done a personality piece like this before, but he's got a high public profile, a pretty interesting background, and besides, the pictures are marvellous. Mm, we've tried, and he won't do interviews. But I agree with you, criminal lawyers make good copy. And he's gorgeous looking. What makes you think you can pull it off? I've made contact. He's interested. Who am I to stand in your way? But be careful. He has quite a reputation. We'll just have to see how well he deserves it then, won't we? Good morning, Olivia. Olivia. Not keeping you up, am I? Oh, don't be ridiculous. I knew you were there all the time. I want to talk to you about Alistair. Oh, for one glorious moment, I thought we were going to spend time on something cheerful. <laughs> His birthday's coming up. Now, there's a cheerful event. He's managed to spend 25 years without getting himself put in jail or dead. <laughs> Not for lack of trying, I'm sure. What is it? You know very well what it is. We have to hand over his trust funds. Far too much money for such an irresponsible lot. There's nothing we can do about the trust fund. The law says we must hand it over. Well, then you find a way around the law. Isn't that what you do in your office every day? Olivia. Excuse me, can I help you? Ah, yes. Mr. Burns. Ah. Hello, I'm Bridget. I would like to see Maxine, if we may. I'll tell you you're here. Well, well, well. What is it? The two older guys, chairman and secretary of the board. So? The third guy. His name is Giles Metcalf. Gentlemen, do come in. And who the hell is Giles Metcalf? I've heard of you, Mr. Metcalf. You have something of a reputation as being a corporate executioner. <laughs> I do my job, Miss Redfern. 
Mrs. Mrs. Redfern. I had no idea you were on the board. Today was my first meeting. And a very educational one it was, too. Good. It's so nice to meet young people who are willing to learn. Oh, yeah, I learned. I learned that there have been a number of costly mistakes at this magazine of late. Not mistakes, Mr. McCuff. Circumstances beyond our control, as I'm sure Mr. Chappell pointed out. Isn't that right, Alfred? Reed, explain the situation. Oh, come on. To suggest that your competitor deliberately tied up the printer? That sounds like paranoia to me, Mrs. Redfern. And I'm sure you know all about that, Mr. McCuff. Now, 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 you two. Now, Maxine, we simply came down here to seek some reassurance that this sort of thing won't happen again. Oh, the next issue will more than make up for all this. I hope so. It will. Well, gentlemen, I think that's all we can do here today. Uh, shall we lunch? Oh, Mr. Metcalf, I'd like to remind you that I have kept gloss on top of the fashion pile since you were running around in short pants. Times change, Mrs. Redfern. Times change. Well, team, I hear the doll cube beckoning for someone. We've got to fight that little toad. Agreed, but how? I mean, the only way we know how, Bridget, he's looking for an excuse to sack me. Well, we're not going to give him one. We will make the next issue of Gloss perfect, and the one after that, and the one after that, and we will send him back to the swamp and throw him up. Which means we need Jasmine back. Oh, unfortunately, yes. She's got her head on another planet, but I... I'll give her this. She's a talented little thing. Well, maybe Julian's therapies will take an effect. But we need her now, Maxie, if we're to get the supplement out. I mean, the hospital is talking about keeping her in for another week. Absolutely out of the question. Do you want me to see if I can get her out? No. I'll deal with this. Once she's finished the supplement, she can be as sick as she likes. Before that, she belongs to me. Well, what's the guts? Are we down the road or what? Quite the contrary. I have assured the board that the next issue of Gloss will be the best in its history. It's now up to you to make sure that this is true. Otherwise, we will all be down the road. Ah, just the person I wanted to see. Likewise. I was coming to see you later on this afternoon. I'm sure you were. Shall we step into your office? Fine. You weren't exactly leaping all over him. No. Well, you live and learn, don't you? Well, what brings you here? Into Flora. Oh, have they been visiting you? Evidently, I sent my stepmother some flowers this morning. Just the sort of gallant touch I'm quite capable of. Only in this instance, I'm quite innocent. What are you up to? Did she like them? Hmm. Just consult me next time. Okay? Actually, I wanted something from you. <laughs> you don't say. Do you think you could arrange for Caro to be busy this evening? I suppose so. What's the occasion? Oh, nothing that would interest you. It's just that I want to make sure she's out of the way. Now, you're not going to do the dirty on her, are you? Darling, I wouldn't hurt her hair on her hair. Do you know that? Let's just say I'm doing it for the good of the family. Look, Maxine, I don't really think it's such a good idea. Things aren't that good between me and Cairo at the moment, as you're no doubt aware. Yes, Brad, I am aware. And in some small way, I feel kind of responsible. No, no, it was very irresponsible of me to poke my nose in where it didn't belong. Well, that's why I think the three of us should get together and talk things through. Over a civilized dinner. And who knows? Maybe the three of us can solve the problems then. <laughs> I know I'm right. So you and Kara will come tonight at eight. Great. It'll be lovely. Just the three of us together. Bye. Fancy a drink? I feel like drowning my sorrows. Yet another Prince Charming turned out to be a frog. Sorry. 
I'm chasing William Townsend tonight. Oh, William Townsend. Well, you better watch yourself there. They say you can undress a woman in three seconds with no hands. Not that I speak from personal experience, of course. I'm a big girl now. I don't need to go out with a chaperone. Oh, well, I was only going to wash my hair anyway. Oh, you shouldn't have, honestly, Maxine. Nonsense. It's a very small get well gesture to a very important member of the Gloss team. And um, here are some books that Julian King recommended. I've organized some sessions with him for you. That's if you want to do them. Thank you. You know, we don't often realize how important people are until they're not there. <laughs> Take you, for example. Now, I never make a mistake when I hire my staff. And I certainly didn't make a mistake when I hired you. You have a great natural flair, Jasmine. And it's something that can't be taught. You've got it. Now, how many fashion supplements have you done? Twelve. Well, <laughs> eleven and a half, really. <laughs> it's amazing. And you know, no one else knows how you did them. Well, I know it looks like I work in a terrible mess, but I really do know where everything is. You're amazing. And you're very, very important to me. And very important to the magazine. It's really nice of you to tell me this, Maxine. And we want you back at work as soon as possible. You don't want to stick around here, do you? It's so depressing. No. Good. Day after tomorrow, then. You're joking! No. I think we should all sit down and talk this thing through, since it seems to involve the three of us. And what brought this brainwave on? Maxine rang today. Oh. So you've had a chat today, have you? Yeah. She invited us to dinner. I think she was sincere. I really do. Well, in that case, you'd better go then. The invitation was for the two of us. Well, I'd like to graciously decline. I'm otherwise engaged. Alistair's asked me to be at the restaurant tonight. Can't you tear yourself away from that restaurant for one night? What the hell's so special about the place? Oh, nothing you'd understand. Just the fact that I feel welcome there. Welcome? How the hell do you think I feel? I'm not even welcome in my own home. Well, maybe you should go to Maxine's. I'm only too sure she'd welcome you with open arms. Checking up on me, Doctor. You've eaten your tea. That's wonderful. Oh, yes. The days of the not-eating Jasmine are gone, I'm afraid. Along with the Jasmine who used to let everyone walk all over her. In fact, a whole new Jasmine is being born, even as we speak. Great. What brought this miraculous change on? Nothing, really. I just discovered that there are people out there who need me. Well, maybe they do. But not just yet. You've still got a lot of recovery to do before I let you out of this hospital. We'll see. We'll see. This is really nice of you, Mum. Can't usually afford to go to the theatre. Now, you're sure you don't mind us having your seats? Of course I don't mind. You run along and have yourselves a good time. And here, something in case you want to go somewhere afterwards. What time do you want me home? Well, no later than midnight. We can't have you falling asleep in school tomorrow, can we? Go on, hurry. You're cutting it a bit fine. You behave yourself, Mum. Really, dear? As if I'd do anything else. See you later. You are a fool, Bradley. You ought to be trying to win your wife back, not rushing off to Maxine. Yes, ma'am. Right this way, madam. I thought you said on the phone there was some sort of emergency. Well, there is, in a manner of speaking. But it's an emergency that can only be solved by an exclusive candlelit dinner for two at the best restaurant in town. And here we are. But why? Well, let's just say it's part of my overall strategy to cheer you up. Thank you. You know, you really don't know how nice it is to have someone who cares enough about you to do something as wonderful as this. Well, I only hope I get the chance to find out. 
Oh, what a pity. I was really looking forward to seeing Caroline. Still, if it's something important. Well, I thought I'd better call in, since I said we were coming. I'm glad you did. Oh, I better go and check the souffle. <laughs> Do you know, Brad, I don't think I've cooked a souffle since the night we threw a party for our wedding anniversary down at the house in Pawanui. <laughs> I remember rightly, it collapsed. A bit like our marriage. Yes. Well, I've improved a lot since then. Cheers. What are we drinking to? Oh, to uh, feeling good. Cheers. I feel terrible. I was supposed to be going out with Brad. Just because you're married doesn't mean you can't lead your own life. Come on, live a little, enjoy yourself. Do something completely irresponsible. And what do you suggest? Why don't we get out of here, you and I? Leave the rest of them to their petty squabbles and just take off. And where shall we go? Some romantic spot, as far away from Olivia as possible, I hope. Doesn't matter. Just so long as you and I are together, who cares? Whoa, Alistair. This is silly. I'm always silly when I'm in love. And it's getting sillier by the minute. No. It's getting more serious by the minute. I love you, Caro. I hope this is important. I'm due at a dinner. It's my will, Sam. I want it altered. What on earth for? To prevent a great wrong being committed. As your old friend, I have to say that we must first discuss this matter. And I'm instructing my solicitor. Instructing, Sam, not being lectured by. You were quite right. There's nothing I can do about the family trust funds, but there is something I can do about my will. Canute could not stop the sea. <laughs> he just didn't try hard enough, Sam Wyatt. There. Who does that remind you of? You. <laughs> when I first met you in London. Mm. Swinging 60s. Ah, oh, it's frightening, isn't it? Seems like only yesterday. Oh, to be 19 again. Instead of some old hag fast-facing middle age. Hey, less of the old hag. It's true. I'm over the hill. Well, if you're over the hill, what the hell does that make me? No, oh, you're not so bad yourself. A bit tatty around the edges. Nothing that a little tender, loving care wouldn't put right. And where would I get this tender, loving care from? There are sources close by. No. We're like the 60s, Maxine. We're past history. You can't bring back the past. Well, at least I can't. Not when I'm in love with Cara. Does she love you? I hope so. Oh, I know we're having our problems at the moment, but we'll fix those. <sighs> so you want to get back together again with Cara? Well, let me give you a word of advice. If you really want to win the hand of your fair Cara, don't make a habit of putting her in the path of attractive young men. Young enough to be your own son. Alistair? Oh, even Alistair wouldn't sink that low. Oh, come on, Brad. A beautiful young woman, her marriage on the rocks. Sounds like fair game to me. That she happens to be your wife would mean absolutely nothing to Alistair. Oh, no, not Cara. Don't be so naive. If she was so devoted to you, where is she tonight, then? She's down at the restaurant. And you can bet they're not going through the books. You're lying, Maxine. Prove it. I will. Oh. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. Let's just forget it. I'd like to, but I can't. 
We've got to talk about it. Otherwise, it'll ruin our friendship. I love you too, Alistair. But not in the way you're talking about. You're a very good friend to me. And I don't know what I would have done without you since I married your father. It's all right. You don't have to let me down gently. I'm not. It's just that I think it's really easy to mistake friendship for love. I really like you, Alistair. And you're very special to me. But it's Brad that I love. And I've got to get him back. You understand? Good. Still friends? <laughs> yeah, of course we are. Monuments and mirror glass, the city's on the maze. The devil takes the hindmost, and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. If you swallow a lie, I want the icing on 